Hey guys, welcome to part 5 of my SD KFZ 251 slash tree build. So in this episode we're going to be taking a look at painting the base for the dark yellow camouflage as well as the actual camouflage pattern itself. So I want to say firstly a big thank you to a friend of the channel Kevin for giving me a spare bottle of FX60 and allowing me to continue this build. So thanks very much for that my friend. So I'm going to take some FX60 and XF55 deck tan. And I'm going to mix this roughly 60% or so or 70% dark yellow to deck tan. And then I'm going to mix it with Tamiya thinner, roughly 60% thinner to 40% paint. And this is going to be the base color for our dark yellow or the uh, Dunkle Gelb as it's often referred to, which I can never pronounce. So once you're happy with the tinning, we're going to start applying it in very thin layers. My idea was to apply very thin layers to keep this really warm uh, sandy brown colour that we laid down on the last episode. However, my I'm still kind of getting used to Tamiya paints and I don't think I tinned it correctly. And I got a little bit of, of orange peel. By the, by the time we're done painting this, a lot of the pre shades going to be lost. Uh, I still need, just need to get my hands on lacquer thinner and I might be able to get away with it then. But again, I'm trying to be as thin with the, my layers and as neat as possible. So with the base coat of our dark yellow allowed to dry, we're going to add a little bit more deck tan to our mixture just to make a slightly lighter colour and we're going to do some basic highlighting. I'm just going to focus this colour into the centre of panels and it's just going to help add a little bit more contrast because as I was saying we lose a lot of our pre-shade so I'm going to have to use highlighting to add a bit more visual interest to the otherwise uh, monotonous colour here. I'm also going to give our dark little base coat uh, to the running gear. I'm going to pretty fly through this, I'm not going to show you all of it, as it being a German vehicle, there are so, so many bloody wheels. I don't run into the same issue with yellow peel or uh, orange peeling here, so I do manage to keep some of the, the warmer color showing through the dark yellow which is which was what I wanted in the first place
So we're going to add further highlights to our Dunkel Glab layer, and I'm just going to add a little bit more XF2 white to our mixture now, so it's going to get very pale. Again, this is a very optional layer, I know some people don't like doing extreme highlighting, however I'm going to be using a lot of oil filters in later steps, so they help counteract this and ensure that it doesn't get too dark, I'm actually going to go quite light here and um, add some pretty stark highlights. And the same as before, I'm just going to focus on centers of panels and some um, raised or sharp edge detail. So now I'm going to go in with even more highlights, this time I'm going to do like an edge highlight. I'm going to mix even more XF2 white into our mixture. And I'm just going to focus on any of the sharp edges. Again, this is very much an optional step. Not everybody likes going this far. But I kind of want to experiment with the airbrush here a little bit. So I'm just going to catch some of the sharp lines on the hull of the 251. So with all our highlighting done, now it's time to add a quick filter, so for this we're going to use X24 Clear Yellow. I'm going to tin this very heavily and I'm going to apply a very light glaze of Clear Yellow. I'm going to be very careful not to pool this onto the model, and if I do see it running, I'm going to come in with a, a Q-tip or a cotton swab and I'm just going to roll off any of the excess before it dries. So now it's on to the tricky part. We're going to start working on the camouflage pattern. And for the green, we're going to use XF67 NATO Green. Again, there's different colors you can use. I just prefer using NATO Green. So I'm going to do some test sprays. I really want to see can I get fine pencil lines as we're going to be going for that kind of squiggly style German camel, which I've absolutely no experience with, so I have no idea how this is going to go. So I'm just going to do lines, as you can see here, just kind of snaking up around the vehicle. So this is actually one of the real impressive things I've found since I've switched to using Tamiya paints for working on my vehicles, is that you can really do get fine lines when this thing is tinned heavily. It, it is kind of impressive how well Tamiya paints actually deal with being tinned down heavily.
So we're just going to add some basic highlights. We're just going to add a drop of XF2 white to our NATO green. And just put a little bit more thinner into it. I want this to be pretty light and transparent. And I'm just going to put this slightly lighter colour into the centres of any of the larger green areas that we put down. Again, this is optional, but it's also very good practice for the airbrush. It does teach you a lot of control. As you can see, it's pretty subtle, but that's exactly what we want. So we're now going to move on to the red, and for that we're going to use XF68 NATO Brown. And if you're not sure, I just take a small scrap piece of paper here and I'm just going to do see can I get pencil lines and if I can then I know we're thin correctly. Now this is where I make a mistake. That first major bar of red brown that we put down is too heavy and too thick and I got, it's going to cause me problems later on so we're going to come back and fix that later. I'm also going to make a mistake here with the shape. I'm not happy with the, the shape of the red brown that we get on the hood of the vehicle. Same as before, we're just going to do a basic highlight by just adding a little bit of XF2 white into our mix, just a drop or two. Now you can see there's a really large blotch of red brown on the hood and on the hull side, and that is just too big, it doesn't suit the rest of the camo. So I'm going to come back in later on with our original XF60, XF55 mix and erase that. So that area here has to go, so we're going to just erase that with our original Dunkelgleb or Gelb mix and uh, we're going to um, come back and do this all over again. I'm going to do this off camera, but I'm just going to show you that I'm uh, erasing some of the larger blotches here. And same here, I'm just going to break that up. So I'm reintroducing white, or the dark yellow, should I say, into areas that the blotches are just too big. So with the camo touched up, we're going to add a filter from Sin Industries. I do not know if these are in production anymore, but it's like a, a tan filter. And I'm just going to put a tiny amount onto my brush. I'm just going to wipe off the excess and just try to put down a very thin layer of this filter. And I found that I did a really good job just blending all the colors together. Again, AK and MIG do their own versions of this. You could also just do this with oil paint if you wanted. I've had this for about 10 years in my stash and I just wanted to use it. So with the camo out of the way, we're going to start working on the part that drove me mental, and this is putting the rubber rims on our road wheels and tires. For this one, it's going to use standard Flavo Flat Black. Um, I would have used German Grey for this if I had it, but I just didn't have any. So the uh, Flat Black will have to do. And this was a soul-destroying step. I absolutely hate doing details like this. 
and it being a German fecal, there's so many of them. But uh, after about an hour and a half, I got most of them done. But I'm not going to show you all these steps. It's going to fairly fly through the different wheels, and you can share on some of my woes. So as you can see, this is a very monotonous step and this wasn't all of it. So we're going to leave this video here. So I really hope you found this video enjoyable. And it was actually really fun trying the German camouflage patterns. Not something I'm very used to doing freehand. So do join me in the next episode. We're going to be doing the weathering and uh, final details of this 251 command vehicle. And then we're going to be moving on to the crew and the, the diorama proper. So thanks for watching, guys. I've been Shane. Also want to say a big thank you again to Kevin for helped me out with the paint and also a big shout out to Felix who is uh, the channel's newest should I say newest Patreon on Patreon so thank you so much guys I've been Shane happy modeling and I'll catch you in the next video bye bye